Let's talk about hex bins in QGIS 3. So hex bins are a kind of polygon layer that you can make that covers your uh, dense point layer usually. And you can create that layer of polygons and then do account points and polygons and style your hexagons as a choropleth to show the density by um, hexagon. You might want to use this to show density if um, if you need something a little more precise than heat maps, but you don't want to use a geography such as census tracts or some other small geometry. So we're going to use hex bins, which is kind of you're making up a shape on the map. <clears throat> and so it's a two-step process. You make a grid and then you do count points and polygons on that grid and style it. So the first step, we're creating a grid. In QGIS 2, I would usually recommend a plugin. But for QGIS 3, you can just go down to the bottom left and search for Create Grid. And the grid type will be hexagon. So we're making hex bins. You could do rectangles or diamonds. In this case, I'm going to do hexagons. For the extent, so this is the um, the shape of the grid. How large do you want this rectangle to be that the grid fills in? Uh, there is this button to the right here that will let you select the layer that you want to cover with the grid. So I will select my points layer. And then this horizontal and vertical spacing, this is how wide and how tall each individual hexagon will be on the layer. So uh, I would start large and then make it smaller if I need to. So let's say 2,000 feet to begin with. And then I won't bother with the overlay and I want my CRS to be the same as my layer. And I'll run that and you can see hexagons. And if I bring my points on top, we can zoom in and see. Yeah, these these um, hexagons are probably a little bit too large. I probably want them to be a bit smaller. So I'll go back down to create grid and we'll do it again. And this is probably what you'll end up doing also is um, trying different things and seeing how they work. Maybe a bit, a lot smaller, just so we can see the difference. Okay. So if I bring the points up again, I could make the grid semi-transparent, just so you can see it in comparison to the underlying one. You can see how much smaller uh, the hexagons are on this grid. I think that's fine for what we're doing. So I'll remove the other one. And now I'll do account points and polygon. I'll do that from the search box also. And my polygons will be my grid that I just created. And I'm doing these points. And I don't really have to do anything else. So it's counting the number of points in each of these hexagons. And now when we go to the attribute table on that new layer, you should see the number of points. <clears throat> so you'll see that a lot of them are zero, a lot of the hexagons in the grid are outside of um, the area of any points. So if I sort by num points, it might take a second. I'll reverse sort so you can see um, at most they have 50 to 150 in them. And I'll make a choropleth graduated style based on num points. 
and we'll just see how that goes. I'll get rid of the points for a moment. You can see, um, you can see the concentration. I might do pretty breaks and see how that goes. Natural breaks might take a moment when you have this much, this many polygons. So if you pick it, just be aware that it might it might take a minute or so. <clears throat> But it does um, better show the um, the contours of the data, and it gives you a better idea of where the hotspots are. And um, and where there aren't that many of these points. And these points, by the way, are um, Uber pickups on one day in the New York area. Um, one thing I might do is add another category here to the classes. I'll click the plus sign and create one just for zero zero. And you see just how many have exactly zero, or they should. And then if I turn off zero zero and that other good. Now I only have the hexagons with any points in them, which might be more what you want, um, rather than showing all of these hexagons that a lot of which aren't in the city at all. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much all there is for making a hex bin map with QGIS 3.